really sure if there's a campsite available there or not. So we're just going to drive some back roads and stuff. If we make it to the office on time, hopefully we will. So, if there's a site available, we'll go for it. We'll get it tomorrow. In the meantime, we'll just travel around the back roads and so forth. Maybe there'll be a place to camp overnight. If not, well, we don't live that far away from the park entrance, so we can always cruise back first thing in the morning. Unless we just find a nice lake to paddle around in all night and go to sleep. Might be a real nice night out for that. You up for it? <laughs> I'm up for it. How about you? He's up for it. We got the recorders with us, we can record some balloons and so forth. See what happens. Hopefully we won't run into any bear or moose, bobcats. Well, other than taking pictures of them. Don't want them at the site. We're just draw, uh, stopping off here for a little doggy stop here and uh, a drink and so forth. A little bit of a break. I won't get in the car for half an hour, but it's a bit finicky when it comes to car rides. So, anyway, this will probably keep them calm. Give them a break. So, we'll just truck around, see if we can find a lake or a uh, place to stop for a break and a bite to eat and uh, maybe uh, go out for a late night canoe ride if it's uh, starry enough and calm enough and uh, maybe even see the tail end of the meteor shower so uh, it'll be a bit of an adventure to see what we do and uh, we've got blankets and all kinds of stuff with us so uh, not a problem So we're at the Algonquin office, going to see if there's a spot on Little Eagle Lake via Magnetowan Lake, see if there's a spot open there tomorrow night, maybe tonight as well, if, there, if it's open tonight too, take the two nights, we'll see what happens. Uh, this is at the uh, main community center, there's a big carved bear here out in front, and it's got the uh, map and so forth. So hopefully we'll have some luck and the spot will be open tonight and tomorrow night as well. Possibly, we hope. Well, what's the verdict? Well, they're totally booked. Wow. Except for tonight, there's one site at the parking lot on Magnetowan Lake. Okay. Okay. And then tomorrow night, there's one available further down the lake on Magnetowan Lake. Okay, so as it turns out, we've got the same spot for two nights on the washboard road here. It's a washboardy road. So we got two nights at the same spot and we'll be able to camp at the same spot without having to set up, tear down and set up again. So into the park we go. We're going to be uh, recording lots of uh, nice spots to record I can see so it'll be lots of fun. asking Glenn about if we have to worry about do something just fell down out of that tree anyway I was asking Glenn if we had to worry about bears walking over from the car look what I find someone left their orange peel see that it's 
kind of thing that bears come after. Hmm, nice citrus. Probably other stuff too. Yeah, there will be bears around tonight.
On the adventure we just filmed um, some good shots hopefully of the loons and now we're scouring the shoreline for a place to put one of the mics for the night. On Night Falls Coming, we're on the lake on Magnetowan Lake. It's a nice small lake. We get Oink and Mike set up, and we'll be going to set up the other one. It's a beautiful lake. Our night panel continued, and I'd done a little photo shoot with Maureen on shore, and left her with Sammy the dog while she took some pictures, and I paddled around for a little while enjoying the sights and sounds. You look up and you see nothing but the stars above. hear the owls and there's a fox crying on the far shore. After a while I came back in and picked up Maureen and Sammy the dog. Canoeing at the lake was very calm and peaceful and quiet. The ambience on the lake was amazing when the loon called just in front of the canoe. 
We couldn't see it, but the night cam could. Loons continue fishing all night long. Sometimes they take time to rest, but they don't go back to a nest or on shore. They stay in the water as soon as they leave the nest when they're just a matter of a few days old and they don't return to the nest. They live their entire lives on water. One of the most iconic calls and probably one of the most sought after experiences in Algonquin Park is hearing the wolves howl. These wolves were at a nearby kill site. We knew there was a kill site just in the forest because we could smell it when the wind blew our way. A beaver splash is just off the side of the canoe, about 30 yards away. We paddled and drifted around the lake all night, recording the wilderness and lake sounds. Before we knew it, we could see the first light of dawn. Mist had blanketed the entire lake. But as the sun slowly creeped up, the mist lifted a little. It uh, made a challenge for um, filming because the lens constantly got wet and it had to be cleaned off and had to take care to make sure the camera didn't get too wet. Baby was waving his little leg there, giving a little shake. And the whole family of loons continued making their rounds along the lake, along the shore from bay to bay. Notice the baby loon still has all its down. No flight feathers whatsoever. I believe that's the male on the right with his tremolo. And the female answering with a very short wail. And the babies are looking around. The male is preening and then rises. We've noticed that they do that a lot, that they'll preen their feathers and twitch around, and then they'll rise up out of the water, stretching their wings as if ready to fly. I believe they're molting and getting their flight feathers ready for the winter migration. Now there's the scene of an Algonquin morning. We paddled and investigated all the bays and nooks and crannies around the lake. And periodically we'd come across the family of loons once again and take some photos.
After a few days of watching the Loon family, we discussed it and we decided to return weekly to continue documenting the young loons up to their first migration. Filming on the lake was a real delight. You just never know what's going to be around the corner. We startled a heron that was in a bay. It took to the wing. It's a week later now. The babies are diving on their own, fishing. They stay down for about 20 seconds or so at a time. hear the baby squealing. This was the first time that we heard the voices of the young adults. That was the mama giving a small wail to them. Usually they hoot to let the chicks know that they're there. In fact, I'd never heard loons hoot so loudly. And here it is almost a week later. Notice how much bigger the loons are. They've actually lost some of that downy feather look, and they've got some of their flight feathers, and they're even looking more speckled with the black and white pattern. I believe the young loon on the right is the older of the two. It seems to be more independent, fishing on its own now. Will the young loons gain their independence? Will they be strong enough to attempt their first migration, only eight or ten weeks away? We were out on the lake all night last night. The clouds parted, it was a very starry night. The moon rose about 3 a.m. And here it is, what a beautiful misty morning it is. With each visit to the lake, I anxiously look forward to seeing the young loons. We've nicknamed them Huey and Dewey. Huey being the juvenile that looks like it's the oldest and Dewey being the younger one. Huey's feeding himself now. We see him diving. And Dewey is still clinging to the mother loon, asking for food, pecking her at the neck and squealing. We can hear her squealing quite a bit. The adult male loon tends to be by himself to fish. I notice that he likes to be like a decoy. He tries to lead you away from the mom and babies. and feed them. She's really feeding them a lot. This is September and, and the parents still feeding the chick. 
to get them as fat as possible for migration. into heavy feeding. That's how good that mama loon is at catching minnows anytime they want. Again. Looking for mama. I want my fish. Here she comes. That's not that's the other That's one. Not mama. Oh, just fed him. That's funny, she fed the one that she's been working with, not the one that came up. We're not going to bother them long here. We're just going to take a few of the picks and then we're going to be on our way. Don't want to interrupt their feeding. Stripes on the back one. The one is back compared to the one at the front now. Is it back? The front. Yeah, this one seems to be not as developed as that one. Well, here it is September the 8th, and one of the adult loons has left the lake. We assume that it's the adult male and wonder if uh, he's flown off to a nearby lake to join up with other loons ready for migration. No. Body, I, I thought you were just going to fall over. The more immature ones. Yeah. They're testing their wings and stuff, stretching and getting used to them. Isn't that neat?
usually by about eight weeks, the young loons are feeding themselves, but it seems like Dewey here prefers to have his food brought to him. trip to go see how the loons are doing. As you can see it's almost six o'clock and we're ready to go. Time to get a move on down the road. Mama Loon looks like she's ready for a migration. Now she has her winter plumage of brown and white. She looks quite a bit different than she does in the summer with her classic black and white colors. Near the end of summer, loons will gather on many of Algonquin's larger lakes before they migrate. Adult loons will usually leave before the young loons do because the young loons may need more time to mature and get their flight feathers. Loons have been known to dive to depths of 70 meters and stay submerged for more than three minutes. But the average dive is less than five meters deep and 40 to 45 seconds long. By eight weeks of age, young loons are fully feathered and can search for food independently of their parents. September 24th, lovely afternoon, 
fall colors are just wonderful almost at their peak really nice should be a good afternoon Each time we come to see the loons, it's like a new adventure. I'm always concerned about Dewey, whether he'll be ready to take flight in the migration. My research shows that um, loons are usually on their way migrating south by the middle of November, and it's already the end of September, and Dewey's still taking food from his mom. back into the park see how the loons are doing it's been uh, a whole week since we have been in the seasons are starting to change the winter winds are coming and the temperatures are beginning to dip below freezing Beautiful day. Back up to see how the limbs are doing. That was Huey stretching his wings. Huey is self-reliant, fishing for himself, while Dewey is still pecking at his mother's neck and squealing for more food. Dewey is just relentless, asking mum for some more to eat. When they're not fishing, the juveniles are going through the processes of testing their wings and getting ready for migration. This little guy was having a hard time figuring out how to flap his wings and stay above the water. It's so October the 15th, Tuesday afternoon. Well, almost early evening now. We're listening for the loons. When 
whenever mama comes up she tends to make them squeal for a fish at least the younger one the older chick seems to be much more independent these days hardly call them chicks anymore young adolescents in fact I think the older ones pretty well got his wings so far in this paddle we've come to the other end of the lake and we haven't seen them so either we missed them in one of the bays or I'm not sure what so we're gonna carry on and we're gonna keep looking while we still have our light alrighty it got too dark for the camera to see but we found mama and the youngest loon Dewey fishing in one of the bays we wonder where's Huey as he started his migration Dewey and Mama enjoying their last days together. We haven't seen Huey at all and can only assume that he has started his migration. That's the young one. And it's big, eh? Yeah, it's really changed. Just in the last 10 days or so, Dewey's gotten really big. He attempts another test flight with more success this time. didn't make it off the lake though. We haven't seen Huey, the oldest juvenile at all today, so we're quite sure that he's started his migration. October 22nd. Snow. Those loons are gonna be cold. son, Chris, and I out on the lake wondering if the loon was going to be back. The water is getting very, very cold. As I dip my finger in, I have a feel of it. It's pretty chilly. No sign of the loons yet. Checked one bay. Going to do the next one. We'll see what we get. We turned the corner into the next bay and Dewey, the lone juvenile loon, was there. Dewey's looking a lot more like an adult now. He's testing his wings quite a bit. We haven't seen Huey since the 16th, though. We can only assume that he's flown the lake and started the migration. We haven't seen Mama today either and wonder if she too has left. He's looking a lot stronger now. We figure he's going to leave the lake any day now. He's preening his feathers, he's stretching his head up.
Well, that was a successful flight, but he didn't make it off the lake. The transition to winter is well on its way. The red and golden color is gone from the trees and it's replaced with white frost and snow. October 29th, and we're heading out once again. It's a very frosty morning. Uh, we'll see what this morning brings us. We'll see if the little loon is there. Maybe we'll see some moose and some other wildlife. The, uh, it's very close to the uh, end of October now and way, way past an extension reprieve for the season. So it's supposed to be sunny today. Should be a great day. Now it's the end of October. We're wondering if maybe today we won't see little Dewey. Hoping that he's flown. Well, we've just checked the final bay and there's no sign of the loon family. Baby loon was here on the 27th and he seems to have perhaps found his wings and away he went. I'm going to do one more round of the lake. Double check to see if he's here or not. Might have missed him if he was diving and being elusive. He's getting to be a pretty good diver so. And we're just going to enjoy the rest of the day and slowly paddle around the lake and do an update if uh, we see anything. Beautiful day. Very frosty. You can see the layer of frost all over the bush, grasses. The geese are migrating. And some of the bays are even freezing up. The water, the lake is definitely starting to freeze over. Here's a little patch of ice that we found and it's very pretty. As we paddled around an island we were met by Dewey, the young juvenile loon fishing in the shallows. Seems that all the minnows have gone, but there's still leeches and crayfish to catch. And after we circled the lake several times, it appears that Dad, Mama, and Huey have definitely flown from the lake and started their migration. Dewey is no longer squealing for Mama, which is another indication that Mum has indeed left the lake. And Dewey is now completely alone. The lake is extremely quiet. Migration is a special time of year because it shows the success of the parents in raising their young. They've learned to fly, to take off and land successfully, to fish and feed themselves for the long trip down south. We know that some loons go as far south as the Gulf of Mexico, while many winter on the smaller inland lakes in the southern U.S., we hoped that the entire loon family would have migrated together, but that's clearly not the case. It makes us wonder, will the loons come back to the same lake? How far south do they go? How much of a journey do these young loons have? Do the juveniles return to the same lake too? If they're traveling on their own, how do they know where to go? And how do they know to get back to the same lake? Research tells us that the young male loons will join up with other groups of young male loons for several years before they choose a mate. <laughs> we wonder where the females go. 
We don't know if we're going to be able to make it back to the lake again this season. A winter storm could blow in and freeze the lake over, trapping the loons in, and the road could become impassable due to fallen trees or ice and snow. If that happens, we may become trapped too. Will Dewey leave before the ice takes hold? We'll find out in the conclusion coming up. Sunday, November the 3rd. It's gonna be a beautiful sunrise. Heading over to Magnetowan Lake once again. Probably for the last time this season, this year. Seeing if the baby loon made it off the lake. Hopefully he did. Well, the one remaining young loon has been close to making it off the lake in previous attempts and test flights. We hope he's gone today. The water's so close to freezing. If he's still on the lake, well, maybe we'll see him go today. A lot of trees were down across the road as a result of the recent windstorm, and it sure made the trip into the park an interesting one. starting to frost up now. Over the last couple of weeks there have been a lot of changes in the landscape going from summer to autumn and now into winter. There is frosting up. In the last few weeks there have been a lot of changes in the landscape. The ponds are freezing almost every morning now. The leaves have changed. It's interesting to see the same pond transition as the season changes. It was always exciting arriving at the park to see Huey and Dewey and how they've changed and how much they've grown. And are they ready for their migration? And well, are they still here? wasn't long once we'd gotten on the lake that we'd seen our little friend Dewey. You hear him? He's calling for mommy. Those are locator calls. Hey mom, I'm here. Where are you? Hopefully we'll see him fly today. He's been diving quite often, really deep. For about 45 seconds he's been underwater, sometimes. And he dives a long way. He can, he can really cruise now. He's quite strong. And his feathers are a lot darker and blacker than what they were. seen him rear up a few times, stretching his wings as if he's ready to take off and fly any time. So hopefully for his own good, he'll stretch his wings and take to the sky. It's really time for him to move along. 
as we've been researching the loons, we've found that loons that are just fledglings and adolescents are going to make their first migration. Often they can get caught on the lake not realizing that they've got to move on and next thing you know the a winter snowstorm moves in or a cold snap comes and, and they can get frozen in in just a matter of 24 hours. So they've got to choose their time when they leave. Some of the loons will take off from the lake and head south and then if they have left late and a lot of the lakes are frozen over then they'll try to land in smaller ponds or you know water is water that moves like a stream or a river and often they'll get caught on those little bodies of water they'll land on them but then they need so much runway to take off they're often just not able to do that they just don't have the space to take off and they'll either perish in that location or they'll get rescued. Preening, looks like he might take off. I've seen other loons preening like that just before they take flight. What the research has shown is that it takes so much energy and they burn so many calories fishing, especially when the water gets colder. They have to eat more and more and more in order to stay warm. Eventually they get to a point where they just can't eat enough to sustain their, their body weight and uh, keep themselves warm and still get enough muscle built up so that they get their flight wings. mannerisms. Sometimes they shake their beak, and flick it, body language. I'm recording. Okay, there he is. He's flying. Look. Look at him, he's flying. He's taking off. He's making it. He's making it above the tree, above the water. Look at Look at him go. Right above the trees. He's going. See ya. Have a good migration, little guy. Cool. He made it. Well, it was fantastic to see the youngest loon finally leave the lake. Watching them go was quite a sight. It was even more amazing that we were present to document the event and see him the moment that he took wing. Looking back over the last 17-week period, it brings back memories of watching how the two loons have grown, and we feel fortunate that we had the opportunity to document their growth up to migration. For us, we had a lot of surprise at seeing babies, and looking back at the growth of the loons over the 17-week period, it brought back the memories of how quickly they grew. It was interesting to see the transition as the weeks went by seemed like they were babies for such a long time, so dependent on the adults for food. And then suddenly one day they fly away. One of the perks of working on the Loon Project was all the time we got to spend in Algonquin Park and enjoying the pristine wilderness. Each season brought its own beauty, the green of summer, the beautiful colors of autumn, and the silvery white of winter. 
We stopped off at many sites along the way around the park, taking the same picture of the same scene as the weeks went on, the season changed. Looking back at some of the highlights of the adventure, of course there was the initial surprise at seeing the babies, the Loon family, and seeing the hawks gathered at the kill site. My favorite time was the misty mornings when the water was like glass and the trees peeked through the mist as it rose from the lake. Seeing the iconic sights of the loons rearing up, calling their lonely whales. It was great watching the two loons grow up. It seemed like Huey may have hatched earlier or just grew faster, and I was always worried about Dewey and whether he would be large enough and strong enough for the migration. It was interesting to notice how attached that we became to the loons as time went on. The night paddle was always a memorable experience. Many, many times we were out on the lake throughout the night. It became quite comfortable on the lake. If you're a paddler or have a chance to go in a canoe, get familiar with the lake through the daytime and then experience it at night. It's something that's just it's an incredible memory. The young loons stayed close to their mother and safe from predators on the lake. I always thought loons would migrate together as a whole family, but Papa left around September 6th, Huey left around October 17th, Mama was still there until October 24th, and Dewey was left alone for a week until he finally took flight on November 3rd. It was fantastic watching the loons grow up. It seemed like Huey must have been hatched earlier than Dewey. He grew faster and he left the lake before Dewey did. Having returned to the same lake week after week, we noticed one of the things that this adventure has brought to the forefront is our awareness of the change of seasons. And watching the leaves turn color and fall away and leaving the trees barren and graying the landscape, we notice how very, very quiet it is now, especially in the bush surrounding the lake, with so many of the birds gone, except for a few jays that squawk now and then. There are no ducks or waterfowl remaining. You hear almost nothing. It sounds so quiet. It's almost like everything is closed till spring. So for us, it seems like the migration marks the end of a cycle. But looking at the bigger picture, we know the cycle doesn't end. It continues on and on. And now, without the hauntingly beautiful calls of the loons on the lake, it feels very much like a void. It's still beautiful, but it's missing a part of what makes Algonquin Park a very special place. Within a few days, temperatures dropped and it snowed, and a layer of ice began to cover the lakes. Dewey migrated just in the nick of time. <laughs>